So, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Manuel, and I'm going to talk to you a bit about um, what is gamification, and uh, most of all, how does it impact you, developers, uh, both in terms of what solutions are out there that have touch points with your lives, but also how you could uh, be a part of this revolution that is happening and uh, what is the role that developers are going to have and are already having, okay? So, let's see if the clicker works. Yeah. Okay, so, like I told you, I'm Manuel, I'm a gamification designer. Uh, I also do a lot of other things. I'm a Boy Scout, I try and write sometimes. But nowadays, I'm mostly obsessed with uh, the science of habit building. Uh, so, how do you create habits? And uh, if possible, how do you, you use gamification to create habits? But also, I'm a big fan of pixel art, so I think I'm in the right place. I'm really a big fan of pixel art. Not sure if you're keeping up with the amount of games that are coming out right now with pixel art as a focus. And I really wanted to put this GIF on, so just so you could enjoy a bit of pixel art. So I work at a place called Fractal Minds. And what we do, uh, like our tagline says, we enhance experiences. So we use mostly gamification, but we also use a bit of design thinking. Uh, whatever methodology works right now, but at the core of our day-to-day -day work is people, okay? So we work with anything that will engage people with the solution we are trying to devise. And nowadays, we are working on a project with uh, Vorten, in case you don't know, it's the biggest retail, tech retail in Portugal. And we've recently created something called the Vorten Game Ring. Uh, and it's basically a place where gamers can go and get the uh, updates on what games are coming out, what reviews are out there. But also, they can interact with each other. They can earn rings by liking, commenting, sharing articles. And they can use those rings to buy some, some things from, uh, from Vorten, partners from Vorten. And also, we are organizing tournaments, weekly tournaments right now, uh, for League of Legends. Uh, we're, we're on the second round, and uh, it's, 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 being, it's pretty cool to finally being able to create a gamer community uh, in Portugal. And not only that, that gamer community being gamified. But our flagship product, our flagship solution, our clicker, please work. Okay. Uh, our flagship solution is called Winners. It's also for Vorten, but for a different target. So what we created was uh, an engagement solution for all the Vorten employees. So if you go to any Vorten store right now, uh, the, the person that is uh, taking whatever, or that's uh, answering to whatever you need, he's using in his background, he's in his back office, he's using something called Vorten Winners, and that basically, it's a dashboard uh, where he can input anything he is selling or anything he sold in that day, and he's getting instant feedback on what that particular sale contributes to his uh, bonus at the end of the month. So, uh, store managers can uh, define objectives, uh, everybody's working towards uh, common missions, common quests, so the same way as you would as you would go about in uh, uh, World of Warcraft, for example. You have a party, you have quests, or you have a raid, you're going to beat that uh, boss at the end. Same thing, they have a mission, uh, several missions for each month, for each uh, time period, and they work together towards that goal and they get instant feedback on what they're doing. Uh, we were fortunate enough to also be recognized uh, for this project, so we received the Portugal Digital Awards like, last week for best uh, workplace, best digital workplace, and also a Sonai Innovation Award. So for us, it's a clear sign that not only we already knew that gamification was going to be an important part of everybody's lives, but now what <laughs> now what we're what we're realizing is that everybody is acknowledging what we already knew, okay? So, what we also do is something called Gamify. So, it's an event. Uh, this year was the second, uh, the second instance of that event, and uh, we did it in June, I think, in uh, Oporto, and now we're going to do 
the next one in November, in, here in Lisbon, 22nd of November. We're going to have some uh, talks about gamification, some workshops. We're going to have uh, the CTO of uh, Funnyfire, which is a gamification platform. He's going to come over here and give a full day workshop for developers. So if you want to get a hands-on experience with uh, one of the top gamification platforms out there, uh, be sure to head to gamify2017.com and uh, keep up with uh, the news. So, quick, uh, quick question, just a show of hands. Who here is a gamer? Okay, who here plays Candy Crush at least once a day or at least once a week or something like Candy Crush or Farmville? Okay, so uh, what normally happens is when, when, we get to, uh, when we get to our customers and we ask, are you gamers? They normally, most of them are not your age, a bit older, and they're, no, no, we're not gamers, we're serious people. And uh, are you sure? Uh, have you ever played cards? Oh yes, then you're a gamer. You're just not a video gamer, you're a gamer. So everybody plays games. And that's something that we normally have to, to deconstruct. But the thing is, with video games, uh, the, the, the phenom of games took, became a whole, different, a whole different thing. So from the onset of video games, from Pong, everybody knows Pong, right? Yeah, OK. Just make sure you weren't living in a basement somewhere. Okay, so. Pong came out in the 70s, and since Pong, for me, for me, uh, the first game wasn't Pong because I wasn't born yet. For me, it was Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, pixel art again. Uh, so, games have come a long way from the first iteration, from since Pong, since Indiana Jones. Nowadays, it's become a bit more hectic. So we've got games like League of Legends. It's become a, an esport. So. Now, esports are, are a thing, so it's not. Video games are no longer just something that we play by ourselves in our room. Now they're worldwide competitions. And we've got uh, data from games like, for example, World of Warcraft, where we know that if we add up the amount of hours played by World of Warcraft players since 2004 when it came out, and I think this number is from 2012 you get to six million years, okay? So a lot of people are spending a lot of hours playing this game, and since then, we've got League of Legends, we've got Overwatch, we've got a lot of big games that are having a lot of people playing them, so everybody's playing all the time, okay? And we've gotten to a point where you've got the NBA Finals, okay? This is a picture from the NBA Finals from 2016, and they had about... 32 million viewers, okay? Pretty standard for an NBA final. What is not that standard, at least for everyone, is that uh, the League of Legends final from 2015 had 36 million viewers, okay? So now we're past the NBA finals. And last year's League of Legends final had 42 million viewers. Okay, so it's, it's a phenomenon, okay? Games are everywhere, gamers are everywhere, and that's the, the main premise that uh, feeds the whole thing that we do nowadays. So gamification feeds off that, that uh, normalization of games. Games are everywhere. Games are part of everybody's lives. So what started to happen when uh, games became big is that the lines also started to get a bit blurry. So uh, everybody was looking at games. They were understanding, OK, so games get all these people together and they get all these people engaged, what if we took games and applied it to something else? And things like this started to crop up. This is called Foldit, and uh, it's a 3D platform, and it's the, the main purpose of this is to build uh, 3D structures of proteins, okay? So anybody can go there, you could sign up right now, and you would try and build a 3D model of a protein. Uh, what happened was that when they put, uh, when they put it when, they, when the game went live, one of the first problems that they, uh, that they submitted to the game, to all the users out there, was the Mason Pfizer virus. So the premise is that if you know the structure of a protein, uh, you know how the virus acts and you can fight it. Okay? So scientists far smarter than us uh, have been working on this problem for 15 years. Okay? Just working on this, completely focused on it. And when 
the problem went to the platform, and all the users, like you and I, we know, I know at least I know next to nothing of biochemistry, uh, they solved the problem in 10 days. So we went from 15 years to 10 days, okay? From maybe 20 people to 300,000 people solving it at the same time. And when, when this happened, everybody was like, oh, okay, so maybe, uh, maybe there's something to using games or elements from games in contexts different from games. Another thing that's interesting, uh, does, any, does everybody know the World of Warcraft wiki? Yeah, so I'm seeing some head nods, okay. It's the second biggest wiki in the world. So you've got Wikipedia, where everybody copies their uh, college papers, and you've got the World of Warcraft wiki. So people are not only spending hours of their life playing the games, but they're also writing about it. And why? They're not getting paid for it. It's just for the status of being the one to write the article, of being the first to write the article, and also the sense of community. So they're working towards a common goal. They're creating this, this, uh, lore, this, uh, this lore that will feed everybody that, that is going to play. So this, these lines between what is a game and what is outside the game, they started to get blurry, and someone, uh, someone defined what this was. Uh, what happens when the elements from games step outside the reality of games. And they call it gamification. So gamification is simply taking those elements, those game mechanics, those game dynamics, and applying it to contexts outside games. So your everyday lives, uh, if you applied game elements to, I don't know, waiting in line for the food, that would be gamification, okay? You don't get outside your experience, you just add on to your experience with game elements and game design techniques. So this is gamification. What this means is that you, get, you, you look at games and you find out what makes them work, okay? So things like points, like torture break. Who plays Clash Royale here? Okay, I think more of you play, you just don't want to admit it. But if you play Clash Royale, there's something called a torture break. It's what happens when you can't open the, the safe, the chest that pops up, you can't open it like for two hours unless you pay up. Okay, that is called a torture break. And that's something that really works outside game domains. Okay, and you've got things like the Oracle effect, like knowing, for example, if imagine you were in college and because you were turning papers and the papers were really good, you got this award that you would know two questions that were coming from the exam. Okay, that's something that would be very special to you. you they wouldn't give you the answers, but you'd have an extra, uh, an extra leverage uh, for, the, for the exam. That's something called the Oracle Effect. So if you take these from games and you apply them to everyday life, you can focus on these, uh, these drivers, these emotional drivers, things like relatedness to others, uh, sense of autonomy, a, progress, a progression to mastery, uh, the sense of purpose, and when you mess with that, you get behavior change. You get behavior change, okay? So you use game mechanics, game elements, game dynamics, and you mess with people's emotions, and you change behaviors. That's all that gamification is about. So, in order to make this more, uh, more, more real, uh, I'd like to talk to you about some examples. The first one is a bit more generic. Uh, does, any, has, has anyone, does anyone have this app installed, Zombies Run? No? Ah, one person. Okay, two person, three person. Okay. So, what this is, this is a running app. Okay, everybody knows what a running app is. You run around and there's, uh, they, they add up the miles or the, the steps or whatever, and then you get points, you get badges. What these guys did is that they added narrative to it. So uh, the world uh, went bonkers uh, due to zombies. It tends to happen a lot right now. Uh, and you are part of a special group of runners, okay? So you're a runner, and you're a part of a community that survived, and you've got missions. So now, every time you go out running, you're not only uh, fighting, out, fighting off the fats, you're also running away from zombies, okay? And you, you put on the headsets, you get, out, you get outside, you run around, and there's this narrator that is telling you the story, and uh, he's talking to you, uh, and he's telling you that uh, there are birds out there, birds are singing, you hear the radio, the walkie-talkies, people talking with each other, and suddenly, you start to hear these sounds that is getting closer. And you, at some point, you discovered that it's zombies, okay? So you need to run from the zombies. And even if you, 
if you if you are not that into narratives, believe me, if you hear a zombie coming closer, you're going to run, okay? And you're going to run hard. And the fact is, they, they, have, they have mechanics like uh, they have GPS, so they know where they're not going to send you into traffic, don't worry. So, but they tell you things like, okay, there's a hedge there, you, you have to duck because zombies are coming, then you have to get up. No, no, get down again, get up, and you're doing squats, okay? Just because you're listening to the narrative and you're getting into the story. So they took the running app, they introduced narrative, and it's suddenly a whole new experience. But when you get to what developers do, it goes a mile further. So this is uh, something from Humble Mania. Humble Mania is a software house from Australia. And they wanted to uh, trim down the recruits' applications. So they created this, this project where you, you were a, a wrestler, you were a luchador uh, from Lucha Libre, okay? and you, you were fighting against an opponent, and you were supposed to code the moves. Okay? So you're going to code, uh, give him a kick, or give him five kicks, or give him a punch, or duck. And that, for them, at least, it was a, uh, a means to discover who had the knack and who had the speed to become a coder for Humble Mania. Okay? Another thing is called Get Badges. Okay? This is uh, like an add-in. It's a standalone uh, website, but it's an add-in that you could, you could put on top of uh, the ticket management uh, software, so where, you, uh, where you've got all the bugs that are registered, all the tasks, and every time you complete a task or you solve a bug, you get points, health points, you get experience points, but you also fight a monster, okay? So uh, for management, this is perfect because they're convincing their developers to close their tasks, to close the bugs, not only in development, but also in the software, and they're getting more pumped for it because they're beating a monster, and they're doing it together. So, okay, I've tried this for a while, uh, it works. Uh, sometimes, okay? But for me, the most interesting experiments of gamification with developers is from a company called NextJump. It's a software house, and what happened is that the, the CEO, Charlie Kim, uh, he's a really fit guy, and what he discovered when he became fit, his work performance got really better, okay? Just because he was healthy now, he was a better programmer, he was a better developer, he was a better manager, okay? And what he decided, because he was the CEO, he could do that, uh, was that all of his developers were going to start to work out. I'm not sure if you know any developers. We're not really prone to working out. It's not a thing that we love, okay? So he decided that he had to do something to convince them to go and work out. So he offered membership in a gym next door, and they started doing the official Portuguese sport that is being signed up in a gym. And the signing up is there, but we just don't go. Okay? So they didn't go. I, I think a couple of people might, maybe, may, have, may have gone, but it, it did not work. So what he did, because he could, he built a gym in the workplace. So nowadays, when you went into the workplace, you would go across the gym door, and at least you would feel, you would feel guilty. Okay? But even then, it didn't work. So what, what he started to do, he started to study gamification, and he started to try and discover what made, what made the, his developers tick. Why, were, why weren't they going? What would make them go? So he started to create his uh, team dynamics, and he created a leaderboard. So everybody suddenly had to go and work out together. And if you worked out, and if you worked out regu regularly, you would get benefits in your day-to-day -day work. Okay, you would get an extra bonus, or you would get an extra day off just for going and work out, okay? And also, if you were a, a, a good performer, you would also get benefits for the gym, okay? You would get a special trainer. You would choose your uh, schedule before everyone else. So that was the way that he got his top performers, because even when he created the leaderboards and the badges and the points, the top performers, the hardcore developers, they would still be just coding there, and they, would, they wouldn't give a, a red ass, okay? So, they, they, they just couldn't be bothered until the point when they realized that by being good coders, they would get benefits in the gym. And by going to the gym, they would get benefits on their uh, monthly pay. Okay? So, and the interesting part about this is that he tried it for a year, and then he took some, uh, he tried, and he saw what worked, and he saw what didn't, and he improved it. 
So he, were, he was always iterating, iterating the solution in order to get to the, the best uh, possible solution for his developers. And the fact is, three years into the, the project, 80% of his developers go and work out two or three times a week. So again, uh, these are developers, man. Like working out two or three times a week, 80% of them. It's, it's really amazing results. Okay, so this is gamification. These are some examples. And now, how, how does this work, okay? What is a gamification project? How does it happen? And most importantly, how does it impact developers, okay? So ideally, what would happen is that someone would approach you, a customer, and he would say, I want to make this gamified thing. I want, to get, I, I want to create this environment where everybody's engaged and everything is fun and you get really motivated to do an everyday task. Something like Classcraft, for example. This is something that a teacher created for his students and you're no longer a student, you're a mystical warrior and everything you do in the class, every job you turn, every paper you turn in, every homework you complete, you get points, you get experience points, you, can, you get money, you can buy armor, you can improve on your skills. And suddenly, being in a class is an RPG, okay? And, but he built it from the ground, okay? From the ground up. He created the gamified solution, understanding his customers, okay, his students, and he built it from the ground up. But that's, normally, that's not normally what happens. What happens is a customer gets, uh, goes and um, schedules a meeting, and he tells you, okay, we need to gamify this. And you, you stare at them and ask, why? And normally they stare back for 10 minutes because it's cool. Okay, but why? And what happens is that they, they normally they have this, this product, this app, this uh, website, and they realize that people weren't, getting, weren't using the app or weren't, weren't using the website. And they heard that there's this buzzword called gamification and it does magical things. Okay, so they tell you, just pile gamification on top of this and it is, it's bound to work. So what normally what gamification, what gamification designers have to do is that they have to take this in and they have to go back to their, to their office and have a little brainstorm and decide, okay, how can I tell my customer that it's, it's nothing like this and he has to create something new or at least has to change a bit of what he's doing. And that's when we talk to developers and see, okay, what is the range of motion that we can have? Uh, and sometimes what the developers do is that, oh, we can build everything from scratch. I, I know, I was a developer for six years, and I, our first instinct was always, we can do it. Ah, oh, but there's a frame. No, no, we can do it, and we can do it better. Uh, and normally what happens after that is that managers stare at you and say, oh, okay, so how long will it take? Uh, oh, six months, a year. We don't have six months, we have two months. Uh, then we can't do that. And when you can't do that, there come the gamification frameworks. So, and other developers like you have gone to the trouble of working out these kinks and looking at problems and trying out solutions. And those solutions are mostly in the forms of gamification frameworks. And there are types of gamification frameworks because we've been looking at uh, the market and trying to understand, because we're a, cons we're a gamification consultancy firm. We, we try and do not reinvent the wheel every time. So we looked at the frameworks out there and the most common type was what I call the monoliths, okay? Uh, these are the big platforms, things like Bunchball, Badgeville, the Game Effective, these huge platforms that they're awesome, they integrate with everything, with SAP, with Salesforce, with uh, your uh, mail at your house, they integrate with everything. But if you want to do something that's not quite what they do, they charge you like a gazillion dollars, okay? And also they're really expensive. Another thing that's, uh, that falls into this category, uh, category of monoliths is something, uh, it's something that's become uh, really common uh, these past few years, uh, especially in Portugal, uh, is that every gamification solution is a quiz platform. So you've got an engagement problem, oh, we have a quiz engine, and we can create quizzes that people get rewards and they, it's gamification. Okay, but uh, I don't want quizzes. Uh, yes, but quizzes? 
Okay, quizzes do some things and, and these things are awesome. And these monoliths, these closed boxes, are great if, you're, if you have a particular problem and that solution fits a problem. But what happens most, uh, most often is that the solution doesn't always fit the problem. So there are other types of frameworks, and I call these uh, wildcards. So the wildcards are things that look awesome, okay? They have this uh, really clean look, and they promise to be really easy for you. But when you get your hands dirty, you realize that you're going to have to program everything. Okay, and they, it's just a, a badge engine, for example, or just a, 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 an integrated leaderboard. So they have a lot of potential, but you have to do the, all the work. Okay, so you're buying a gamification engine, but you're still going to have to develop everything. And then there are something that I call the clothes that have just been washed. Okay, so what happens when you just wash your clothes? They, they get they get tighter. Okay, and then you try them on, and they're very uncomfortable at the first, but then you get used to it and you realize, okay, they've just been washed, they smell really good, okay? And this, what happens with these frameworks is that they, they tend to oversell a bit uh, and they tend to have a special way of thinking about the problems, but when you get your hands into it, you realize that they have a lot of potential and they do the work. You have to do a bit of development to integrate with the solution you're trying to create, but they tend to fit with most environments. We work with one of these, and uh, we've had some issues with it. Everybody has issues, uh, but most, most of the times, we've always found a way to work with the solution in order to get to our problem without shifting our problem, okay? So, even still, sometimes, because we're developers, we want to build it from the ground up, okay? So, what does it mean to create a gamification framework? What does it mean? What it means is that you're going to have to think about three core things, okay? You're going to have to think about how you're going to, to trigger an action, how you're going to motivate someone to do something. You're going to have to think about how you're going to register those actions, okay? And you're going to have to think about how you're going to reward people and how you're going to incentivize them to return to this cycle, okay, and do the actions again. So. What this, what, this, what, this, uh, what this means is that when you're, going to have, when you're going to look at the triggers, you're probably going to have to look at integrations or notification engines, something that calls to action, okay? Regarding the action component, you're going to have, you're going to, have to consider user inputs, okay? And this isn't only uh, the front end, okay? This is also how you integrate with uh, other applications they are going to register the actions for you. For example, if you're going to create a gamification framework to integrate with a call center, you're going to have to register every call that uh, the agent picks up, every call that he hangs up, his performance, everything is considered an action. And finally, you're going to have to think about a reward system, okay? And reward system is not only the, the cash reward or a, a prize catalog, it's also how you provide feedback to the users. So if I do an action, I, I, I sure I, I expect some form of feedback. Okay, if I do something, if I click on a button, I expect the button to simulate that I actually clicked it and to give me some form of feedback, a progress bar or a spinner. Okay, these are feedbacks and these are forms of rewards because humans feel rewarded when they get feedback on an action. So, what does this mean in architecture? Okay. What this means is that you're going to have an integration layer and also a notification engine because you're probably going to have to uh, buzz the people that are working with your platform, okay? You're going to have to notify them to bring them into your, your experience. You're going to have the front end, of course, and what this means is that when you're considering a gamification solution, you're not, you're not only considering the engine that uh, uh, calculates the points and that uh, gives the badges, you're also going to have to worry about all the pop-ups, all the badge designs, all the, not on the small notifications, all the avatars, for example, and these are front-end components that you're going to have to consider. And also, you're going to have to consider the rules engine and also the data layer and the business layer. What, what normally what we've discovered is that the biggest problems arise uh, when you consider the integration components 
okay, when you get to a company and they tell you, okay, we've got these five or six systems and they provide us with KPIs and we need you to consider that for the gamification. And then you go and talk with their IT department and uh, integration is a file that they produce, a text file that they produce once a day and you want real time, okay, because gamification, if it's not in real time, it's no use. And therein lies the problem. So sometimes that integration forces you to work around the restrictions that each customer has. So there is no silver bullet, okay? There is no, oh, this integrates with everything. No, it doesn't, okay? It's like uh, tic-tac-toe. If someone tells you, I have a strategy to always win at tic-tac-toe, it's false. There is no, su no such thing, okay? And also, another problem that normally, arise, uh, normally arises is the rules engine. Uh, it's not obvious, because uh, as a developer, when you consider a rules engine, you, you might as well do a, you create an entry where you can put a SQL expression, and it just works into, goes into the beta database, and it uh, computes all the, uh, the, the, the prerequisites, and it hands out a badge. For a developer, it's easy. But you have to consider that the gamification framework comes with a game master, okay? And that game master, the, people, the, the person that is going to keep the, the solution going, because no gamification solution is a one-off deliverable, okay? And if you want to keep the, the gamification solution alive, you have to consider a game master. And the game master needs to work with the rules engine. He has to create a new badge. And this new badge is handed out every time someone checks in to, uh, to, your, to, 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 to the workplace uh, five times, uh, and most of those times are before 9 a.m., and he checks in with a colleague. So you have all these rules, and the game master has to be able to, to put those rules into the system. So you need to create a rules engine that is agile and that handles uh, a user that is not that aware of how it works, okay? So, what is the end game in all this? When, when, we, when we try and bring developers into creating a gamification solution, our main end game is that you are aware that what you are going to create, uh, first of all, it's going to be a lot of hard work, okay? If you want, particularly if you want to build a gamification engine from the ground up, it's going to be a lot of hard work, and you're going to have to test it a lot, okay? There, if, if you look at games, the first thing that crops up when a new game uh, arises are the exploits, okay? So there's a new uh, release of uh, World of Warcraft, and everybody already realized that if he kills this monster five times at midday, he gets a special loot, okay? So with gamification solutions, it's the same thing. You release a product, and everybody is going to uh, discover what are the hacks, okay? So you really, really need to test this out. But the end game, the real end game, is that we want to create journeys, okay? And when we are creating a gamification solution, we are trying to take people away from what they're doing in their everyday lives without actually taking them away from what they're doing, okay? You're waiting in line in the food court. You're still waiting in line in the food. You have to wait in line. But you could do something to it that would make the experience more enjoyable. And that is our mission. And as developers, your role, our role, is to create systems that integrate seamlessly with what everyone is doing. It's no use to create an app that's on the side of the other app that you normally use, and you use this app, and then you have to click on the other. Okay, as developers, you really need to realize that when a gamification designer uh, calls a meeting and says, okay, this needs to integrate with uh, their Fitbits, uh, their... Uh, um, their timetables, the, with Outlook, this needs to integrate with everything. It's not because they are dreamers, okay? <laughs> Normally, they are dreamers, but it's because this really needs to be seamless. This really needs to be a journey, and this really needs to be engaging. And if, in order to be engaging, it can't have any obstacles. So, as developers, and if you want to someday become, or if you already are gamification designers, you really need to embrace this journey and this will to create a journey for your, for your customers uh, in order for them to really get engaged with the problem we are, you are trying to overcome, okay? So, this is pretty much what I was going to say to you, okay? 
I hope that at least you get curious about gamification. Uh, if so, I'm going to hang, about, uh, hang around the whole day. If you can, we can talk. Uh, and also, we're going to have a workshop tomorrow, so you can get some hands-on experience in how you create a gamification solution and how you, to so how you solve uh, engagement problems with gamification solutions. Uh, and if you're curious about the development components, 22nd November, we're going to have a, a developer workshop, a whole day developer workshop, so you can sign up at gamify2017.com. That's it. Thank you. No? I think you can ask questions if you want. Uh, <laughs> we, have, we have a lot of time, so feel free if you have them. If not, feel free to hang around. <laughs> no? There's a question there. One, two. Well, hi. Um, the question I have is, how can you keep people interested in your product? Because you can you can build like a gamification system, but after after some time, it can can get a bit tiresome. Mm -hmm. And how do you keep keep people interested? In? Is it the purpose? <laughs> Is it uh, you keep adding new things or changing things? Okay, there there are several answers that I could give you. So first of all, it's the cliche one. So you need to know your users. Okay, and but it's it's cliche on the first layer. But on the second layer, th that thing you were talking about, purpose, for example, not everyone is motivated by purpose, okay? Uh, it, and something that you need to realize when you're designing a gamification solution uh, is that you, you don't just need to understand what are their, their habits, their demographics. This is, this is useful, but you really need to understand what drives them, okay? So things like autonomy, are they looking for... Uh, uh, handling their own decisions? Are they looking to progress to mastery? Are they looking for a purpose? Are they curious? Are, do, are they motivated by the sense of urgency? For example, if you go to casinos, there are some people that, I, for example, I hate casinos, but if you go to a casino, there are a lot of people there. So, and they're motivated by what? By the curiosity and by the danger of losing something and the possibility of gaining something. So, different people have different motivations, what you need to do is you, you need to outline those personas, the, you need to really understand those personas, go out there, interview them, observe them in, the, observe them in the, their environment, and when you really know them, you can choose the game mechanics that are going to be useful. So something that's, that's pretty common right now are the, the, what we call the PBLs, the points, badges, and leaderboard solutions. So you just get, get an app and then you pile on the points, pile on the badges and the leaderboards, and it's supposed to motivate everyone. It doesn't, okay? And it gets tiresome, and it gets annoying after, after a time. So what you need to do, and you said something that's, that's really important, and it, most of the times it's hard to sell to a customer, is that when you sell a gamification solution, you, you always need to sell a maintenance fee, okay? Because a gamification solution will not work if it's handed out, and you just ride away towards the horizon, okay? It's not going to work. So you need to always be adding new features, and even if it's just giving a twist, or even if it's just, okay, you have a mission mechanic, and you cr can create missions all the time. If the missions differ from one another, you're going to provide a, a clear dynamic for the, for the users, and everybody, everybody's hanging around and ha wondering what, we, what is going to come up next. Okay, so on the one hand, really understand the, your users and really embrace the fact that you're going to have to look for the game mechanics that work for them, not just piling on the points, the badges, and the leaderboards, and also keep the solution alive, okay? So roadmap is as important as the deliverable, okay? Okay, more questions? Okay, there's one up front and one in the back. No, okay, so him. <laughs> so, uh, my question is kind of towards the other way you're working for. Have you ever had to consider problems with over gamification? I can give you an example. Um, you talk about making the workplace uh, a, f a funnier, 
more engaging. Yeah, more, more engaging. engaging. But I mean, we have we live in an age where uh, people get extremely bored, and if a guy hasn't replied to my WhatsApp message, but he has seen the message after one minute, I'm getting pissed. So we have overstimulation everywhere. Yeah. I mean, uh, Facebook likes whatever you want. So do do you ever? have taken into consideration overstimulation. I mean, you can make the workplace a cool environment, but I'm not going to work in that company all the time. And yeah. you have to, at some point, face the fact that life sometimes is boring, and yeah. that's fine, you know? Yeah. Do you ever have taken that into consideration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've taken that into consideration. Um, and I, I, I don't think I agree with you that life has to be boring. It can be quiet. And it can be peaceful and can be silent, but it shouldn't always be, be boring because boring, uh, boring is negative. Okay, uh, you can be quiet and just enjoy the quietness. You're not bored. You're enjoying it. Okay, it's it's a little different, but yeah, uh, it's a real danger over simulation and uh, particularly with the younger crowds and Gen Y and now Gen Gen Z that they're even more hyped than us. Okay, they're really connected by the hip to their tablets and their cell phones. And there's a danger that they're becoming more irritable, for example. Uh, the, the following generations are really, really more irritable than the, the previous ones. But when you get to the workplace, for example, when we were considering the, the Vorten Winner solution, uh, one of the first ideas that came up was if we could create a game that the employees were playing all the time, and they were getting notifications to get back into the game. And when, when we talked with them, the first thing they told us was like, uh, that is going to bug me to infinity. And I want to, uh, I don't know, like pay attention to my customers, for example, instead of being pl uh, playing all the time. So what normally what we take into account when we... Uh, when we interview the users and when we do focus groups and when we talk to the customers, because normally we start with the, the company goals. Okay? They have these KPIs they need to achieve with that gamification solution. And the next step is we're going to, 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 to the terrain and we're going to talk to the users that are going to use the app or the, the website. And we need to understand uh, both sides of the same coin. And when we do that, we try and realize what, what is their user journey, their normal user journey? And when can we be pushy without being uh, annoying? And how can we bring them naturally to the solution? So how can we bring them without always nudging them? Okay, that's what happens, for example, with Facebook. Because with Facebook, you get the nudges. Yeah, you get the notification, someone liked you. Okay, now you're suddenly important. But you're also... Uh, the, the endless feed that you have, the, the main screen of Facebook, it's an infinite feed, okay? You can scroll on forever, okay? And that's a passive way to get you back into the platform because you're always wondering, maybe someone has said something important and I'm missing it, okay? And then you go and check it. And Facebook doesn't need to tell you to check it. It's just there uh, and it's appealing by itself. So that, there are ways to, to get people engaged without overstimulating them, okay? They're less obvious, they're harder to do, uh, but they are there. And that's something that's really cropped up in the gamification community in the in recent years, the recent past two years, is gamification designers are starting to get worried. Are we stimulating them too much? Are we just piling on the points and the best and the leaderboards and hoping it works? And now people are trying to design better solutions and more integrated solutions so we can achieve the results and people don't feel annoyed with the platform afterwards because we can achieve the results, but if they go away because, okay, I'm tired of this, it, it didn't do it for us, okay? We, need, we really need to feel that we change behaviors, not just change behavior for a while, okay? More questions? I think not. Okay, so thank you again and see you around.